So I wanted to then quickly take, uh, just talk about uh, lowering the gaze. I want to take the example of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His name was Thalaba ibn Abdul Rahman. He was a young man about the age of 16, and he used to always run errands for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would send him here and he would send him there to do something for him. So one day the Prophet sallallahu sent him to do something, and he was walking through the city of Medina, and he passed by a house with an open door. So he glanced inside and he saw a type of curtain that they used to cover the shower area. And the wind blew that curtain and he saw a woman, a Muslim woman inside that was bathing. And it's as if he glanced for too long or he, he looked for a bit too long until he saw something and then he came to his senses. So he was overtaken by an extreme feeling of guilt and hypocrisy. And he said to himself, A'udhu Billah. The Prophet, how can I be of, of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and one who is close to him, who runs his errands and be so horrible as to disrespect the people's privacy? So then he says, I respect, disrespect the aura of the Muslims. Allah, Wallahi, Allah is going to send ayat and reveal and mention me with the hypocrites. So he feared to return to the Prophet ﷺ, who would tell him that he is a hypocrite. So he ran away out of fear. He ran away. So the Prophet ﷺ waited for him for hours and he waited from one prayer to the next and then he started to ask about him as the days went by and then the Prophet ﷺ would ask, Look, have you seen Tha'laba? And then days passed so he sent Umar ibn Khattab and Salman al-Farisi to go look for him in the streets of Medina. So they came back, they said, O Prophet of Allah, we searched for him in the roads, the markets and the meadows and we couldn't find him. Perhaps he'll come back. So the Prophet ﷺ waited. And then after a while again he said, Ya Umar, Ya Salman, go and look for him in the outskirts of Medina. So they went and they came to a set of mountains between Mecca and Medina where some nomads were herding their goats. So they were, they, the, the nomads saw that they were looking for something. So they asked them, are you looking for something? They said, we're looking for a boy, his description is this and that. So they said, perhaps you are looking for Al-Fatal Bakka, for perhaps you're looking for the young man who's always crying. Umar says, I don't know about that, but we're looking for a boy who's this tall and this is his complexion, and he looks like this and that. So then, but what about this young boy you're talking about? And he says, on the other side of this mountain is a young man who for 40 days we hear nothing from him but crying and istighfar. So Umar asked, when does he come down? He said, they, they said he comes down when the sun sets. He comes to us. We give him a little bit of milk. So he drinks it while he's mixing his tears with it. Meaning while he's drinking, he's still crying. And then he goes up to the mountain again while he's crying. So then Umar says, how can we see him? He says, when the sun sets. So Umar hid and Salman radiallahu anhu, they hid. And when the sun set, Thalab ibn Abdurrahman radiallahu anhu came down looking sad and dejected, his head lowered, the tears running down his face, and he has lost a lot of weight. So he came to the A'rab and they gave him some milk. So he takes it to bring it to his mouth, and he begins to cry so much that he couldn't drink. And then finally he drinks what he could, and he turns to go back to the mountain. So then Umar and Salman radiallahu came to him. And when he saw them, he was so scared. He says, what do you want from me? They said, the Prophet sallallahu wants you. He says, what does he want from me? He said, I don't know. He says, did Allah reveal ayat about me? He said, we don't know. Has Allah mentioned me with the hypocrites? He said, we don't know. He says, people, please do not embarrass me and leave me to die alone on the side of this mountain. So they said, Wallahi, we won't leave you. So he struggled, but they took him back to Medina. And they took him to his home. And he was crying harder than ever. So then Umar went and told the Prophet Wasallam, we found Thalaba ibn Abdul Rahman. He said, where did you find him? He said, we found him on the side of a mountain. And he's at home now, you can visit him if you like. So the Prophet ﷺ went and entered upon him. And when he saw the Prophet ﷺ, he was so scared and he screamed out, Ya Rasulullah, Anzal Allahu fiya ayat. Has Allah revealed ayat about me? The Prophet ﷺ said, Kalla. He said, No. Has Allah mentioned me with the hypocrites? The Prophet ﷺ said, No. So then he cried. He increased in crying. And the Prophet ﷺ sat near him. 
And he took his head and he put it on his blessed thigh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then Tha'lab cried and he said, O Prophet of Allah, remove a head that is full of sins and transgression from your thigh. I am lesser and not deserving. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no. So then the Prophet ﷺ asked him, he said, Ya Tha'laba, ma tarju ya Tha'laba, what do you wish for? And he said, I wish for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asked him, then what are you afraid of? He says, I am afraid of the punishment of Allah. And he says, وَمَاذَا تَتَمَنَّى And what do you hope, what do you wish for? He says, أتمنى that I wish for the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa So the Prophet ﷺ then made dua for him while he's crying, saying, أَسْتَغْفِرْ لِيَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Ask forgiveness for me, O Prophet of Allah. Suddenly, Tha'laba radiallahu anhu, he jolted, he shook. So the Prophet ﷺ, he says to the Prophet ﷺ, I feel as though ants are walking between my flesh and my bones, like something is walking between my flesh and bones. So the Prophet ﷺ said, أَوَتَجِدُ ذَلِكَ يَا ثَعْلَبَ Do you feel that? He said, yes. He says, that is death. It is coming to you. So then he kept saying the jihada, astaghfirullah, la ilaha illallah, until the soul left his body. So then when he died, the Prophet ﷺ washed him and covered him and led the prayer over him. And while they were carrying him to the cemetery, the Prophet ﷺ was walking behind his body, but he was walking on the tip of his toes as if it were very, very crowded. So then Umar says to him, Ya Rasulullah, Tamshi ala atrafi qadamayk, wal nasu qad awsa'u lak. You're walking on the tip of your toes, but the people have given you a lot of room. So he says, Ya Umar, Wayhaka Ya Umar, may Allah have mercy on you, Umar. Wallahi, I do not find a place to put my foot because of how the angels are crowding me over him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Anas radiallahu anhu said that. To, he says to the generation after the companions, you imagine certain sins to be more insignificant than a straw. Something like a, a straw, which is very insignificant. But at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we used to count them among those things that can destroy a man. And in this story, Tha'laba ibn Abdurrahman radiallahu anhu, he did something, he, took, he gazed, he took a gaze, but it became so much of a weight, that sin, and this is something that so many people have taken for granted, looking at images of women in magazines, on television, on the internet. And people have become so used to it that they don't even think about it. How many people think of lowering their gaze from the newscaster? They look at the news, they watch the news, you're watching the news. But there's a, there's a woman who has a lot of makeup and you're looking at her the whole time. People don't even remember to lower their gaze. Ibn Mas'ud said, a believer treats a sin as if it were a mountain over his head that may fall on him any moment. Where a regular sinner looks at them like a fly that sat on his nose and he waved it away with his hand. The believer, the, way, the sin is like a mountain that's going to fall on you any minute. But for the person who sins normally, sits on your nose, you go like this and it's gone. And that's why then, lowering the gaze, things like that, people have become so used to looking at things that are haram. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of minor sins, for they add on until they destroy a man.